Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome back to more Plague Inc. Evolved Custom Scenarios. We have another requested scenario by the same guy who's been making a whole bunch of these combination plagues for us. This time, it is a combination between the Necroavirus and the Shadow Plague, hence named the Necroado Plague. Well, doesn't exactly roll off the tongue now, does it? But it's, it makes sense. I mean, they're both undead virus things, right? So you might as well just combine them and see what happens. You are not a Necroa nor a Shadow, but you are the Necroado Plague, reanimating the dead and turning zombies into zombie vampires. Dear God, if there was one thing that would have made the vampires even scarier, it's to make them zombie vampires, am I right? Actually, no, zombies are dumb. I actually think that a zombie vampire sounds a little bit easier to deal with than a, uh, a fully-fledged sentient vampire, but all right. So we're gonna reanimate re the dead. Um, I have no idea how this starts. I assume we're gonna be able to move a vampire around like normal, and if that's the case, we wanna start in a place like Greenland. So we'll start up over there, right? Let's see if that's actually true. We have the Zoonotic Shift, a bunch of standard options, including Fomites, Droplets, Blood, okay. Symptoms, we have the Shadow Blessing plus Nocturnal and Dark Pustules. These are pretty standard as well. Interesting though, I can't go for my kind of cheese strat where I don't bother with the disease until I've eradicated all of the Templar. So we have to start with the disease right off the bat. Then we have reanimation. Wait a minute, do I not have a vampire? Because if I don't have a vampire, that changes a lot of how I play this and I really wish I hadn't started in Greenland. I don't see evidence that I have a vampire. Oh no. Okay, we're restarting that. <laughs> um, starting in Greenland is only useful if you plan on actually devouring the population, but since I apparently don't have the ability to devour a population, we're just gonna start in Saudi Arabia instead. So wait, how is this gonna differ then from a regular zombies? Maybe reanimation actually gives me a vampire. Maybe, I don't know. We're gonna find, I'm finding this stuff out as much as you are, all right? This is all new to me. I go into these things blind. Almost always. It's very rare that I have any uh, experience with these scenarios before I get into it. 11 DNA is all we would need with this, but we're just going to go ahead and grab instead a bit of early uh, infection chance. Spread things around here in Saudi Arabia. Since we had to start with the disease, I kind of figure we might as well do that before I risk star uh, starting up the Templar. Uh, we'll go with wolves? Rural regions? Yeah, there's a fair bit of rural regions around Saudi Arabia. I guess we can go ahead and do that. Not a lot of people infected, but this should be at least enough infectivity and severity to one, get me a lot of extra DNA from getting into new countries, and two, uh, just kind of start hitting a critical mass in a couple places so that my vampire doesn't have to hit literally every single country in the game. Which is how I would usually do it. The cheese strategy being, of course, start in Greenland, devour the population, move to Iceland, devour the population, get a freaking ton of points, crush the Templar, and you can literally just sit there and farm out score. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. If you haven't seen that, I'd recommend you check it and take a look. So we have reanimation. Does this get me a, a vampire? No, it does not. Okay, so starting in Saudi Arabia was still the right way to go. Combat advantage, heat tolerance, zombie lairs. So increases horde size and decreases decay, but I'm guessing I can't place these like I would for the vampire? Guessing. Horde travel and reanimate. So it looks to me like basically this scenario strips out the one mechanic that really makes the Vampire Shadow Plague unique, which is a controllable unit, and instead replaces it with the same passive stuff you would get from the normal zombies. In which case, the symptoms, I mean, they're just basically like regular symptoms. They just increase infectivity and severity. So unless somewhere down here we have the ability to unlock a vampire, this is basically the Necroa virus with just a totally different set of symptoms, right? Am I understanding that correctly? That's kind of what it feels like. Uh, let's go over some bats, and I probably want to get some air travel at some point. We need to continue working on this disease. Since apparently we're not going to get vampires able to turn people for me in the shadow of night. Oh well. Antisocial behavior, really. Would you call zombie vampires antisocial? I would call them antisocial personally, but alright. Uh, let's go over some more air travel there. I probably want to get Fomite since we're probably going to be getting into places like Europe very soon. So we'll pick some of that up. Some droplets wouldn't be bad. Hitting critical mass in a lot of locations all of a sudden. And yeah, the double Fomites is basically going to be drug resistance in most of the developed countries. So that'll be helpful. Uh, we'll want to get probably horde travel early on. Drifting fermentation. They ferment in the seas? That's gross. Uh, hundreds of thousands, probably useful. We don't need combat advantage yet. Let's go for decreased decay, so I keep my zombies up and running. And yeah, now people are starting to transform into zombies. Interesting that it took this long, though. We had to infect almost the entire population to get a very small number of zombies moving around. I can pl place layers? Well, how's that gonna work for me? Because I can't, I can't teleport to layers like I would with a zombie, uh, with a vampire, right? Increases the overall strength of zombies in a lair. Maybe I place the layers on um, 
enemy anti-zombie sites. Maybe. Well, okay, anyway, um, we'll just let this kind of do its thing for a little bit. I could start moving some zombies around, but we only have zombies in a handful of countries. It's apparently taking a very long time to turn people. Let's go for some combat uh, advantage. There we go, increase the chance of zombie victims becoming zombies, that's what I want. I just want to maximize the number of zombies I have on the planet at any given time, so I have a massive horde to work with. There's the Z-Com, okay. So I'm gonna move a huge number of zombies over into Egypt. And we're gonna try to set up against these guys pretty early. And I'll set up a lair here. Increasing the strength of the zombies if I pick up lair strengthenings level one and two. So the zombies are increasing in number. If I can knock out Zcom like right now, that's obviously pretty good. I would need 16 points in order to continue getting more upgrades. We're still hitting critical mass. No one's getting infected, but we're definitely just killing a lot of people and converting them instead. And obviously the more I um, continue to build up, right, the better. So now we're a lot stronger over here. I mean, if I can just knock out Zcom and nip it in the bud right off the bat, that's kind of massive. Reanimate, probably don't need that. Um, I probably want to get more combat advantage, so I'll convert more people into zombies in the first place. They're trying to work on that cure, and they're making good progress, but we'll see. Zombies are going to destroy Egypt, so they've already destroyed quite a few other places. That's good. Uh, we'll go for drifting fermentation so I can travel across the ocean a lot faster. Let's go to places like Greenland. Just make sure that I don't lose track. I do need to make sure that we hit those islands. It would be very embarrassing to miss that entirely. Let's go from, say, Indonesia into the Philippines. Collect all this extra DNA. Here is 25% complete. They're working on it pretty quickly, actually. Almost done here in Libya, and there goes Zcom. So unless they've set up something else here that I haven't seen, I'm pretty sure we just finished them off. Um, million strong doesn't do me a lot of good now that Zcom is taken care of, so instead we're just gonna go for more infectivity of the disease. Necroa slaves. So that would be normal for the vampires. And there goes Zcom, so they're completely gone. Fantastic. Uh, we'll pick it up, but what does that do for me? I mean, who worships the, the zombies? I mean, they are zombie vampires, so let's not forget that. Dark pustules, harder to cure. Yeah, we should probably start working on that, because the cure's going a little bit faster than I currently feel comfortable with. Let's get into Iceland and such. Mass psychosis in the victims, that's great. Um, let's see, who is not infected? Japan? No, you're infected. I think just about every island is infected. It's now just a question of waiting for the zombies to actually, like, you know, turn. I'm pretty sure that's it, though. Yeah, we got zombies all over here. You're infected. Let's go ahead and send a few over from Australia into New Zealand, just to make sure that that's all taken care of. Would hate to find out that I'm wrong, and let's invade Canada. I mean, when in doubt, let's just go ahead and invade Canada. That seems fine. Everywhere else good? Peru, Central Europe. So mostly Europe is holding out on me. We can boost that up, though. Let's go into, let's say, the Ukraine and into Sweden. That seems fine. Lots of DNA coming through all of a sudden. Holy crap. Let's slow down that cure by a lot. Also increase some infectivity. And, I don't know, um, strengthen the zombies? Blood sacrifices? Yeah, we could do that. Mysticatory tension, yep. Anything that just allows me to go ahead and boost up some combat strength and turn people a lot faster. Let's go ahead and move into the Baltics, and then we'll move into Poland, and we will move into Norway from Finland. Ah, don't lose the DNA! There we go. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it! Got it. Ah! Pause. I was hoping to click all those before I had to pause, but I decided I'm weak. I want to actually collect the DNA, even if it's totally useless. All right, horrific slaughter in Finland. Well, that's terrifying, ain't it? So, pretty much the entire world has been infected, we're just waiting on Central Europe, and that is going to be the end of everything. Let's place a quick lair here in uh, Germany and in the USA, because it looks good. I mean, what's the cost? Oh, never mind, it's over. I was gonna say, how, much, how many points does it take to place down a lair? Because it feels like I could have done that anywhere, I didn't see a cost associated, but it must have been one. Anyway, Pax Eternus is done, and we've devoured everybody. So, like, again, by taking out the vampire unique mechanic, this is really less of a shadow plague as much as just copying over the symptoms tree, and then you just play with zombies. And if you play it that way, everything's completely fine. The use of the lair to obliterate Zcom before they could even set up a second base, now that was pretty funny. That was pretty good, but anyway. 443 days, 38% cure progress, 54,449 points, two stars overall. Probably could have played that a little bit better, but overall, I think this was pretty fun. So it's a pretty fun scenario, and I can certainly give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna judge it based on the idea that it's basically just a thematic Necroa virus scenario. And from that perspective, it's pretty good. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.